in this portion of the resource editor tutorial uh, for PSD customization, we're going to talk about um, taking this UI into an actual application. And we're going to build an image search application using these basic UI concepts. So first thing, I've added a new text field component from uh, the images that we took from the PSD. And I spaced out the button a bit. I made the background head transparent so you can see through to the image underneath. And now what I'm going to do is create a search form. To do this, I'm going to duplicate the current form so we can get some of the UI aspects here. And I'm going to call it search. Now, this form is very simple, really. It has a text field in it. And I don't want any text in the text field. So I'm going to call it search field. And I'm going to uh, place a hint text in it. Uh, enter search query. And here I'm going to type uh, search. So this is the actual search button. That's simple enough. Now uh, I'll call this also search button. Now I'd like to create the actual search results form. So I'm going to again duplicate this form and call it a search results. And I don't need these two anymore. I'll just remove them. And I'll put in buttons for, for prototyping, really, because uh, the, this code will be dynamically created. But uh, um, I will use the form, but I won't use the buttons. I just want to show you how it will look. And it helps uh, designers in prototyping how the final application will look. So here I'll just call it result1. And I'll give it a different, remove the text, because it's unnecessary. I'll put icons here to help me uh, perceive how the results will look. So I'll add a few icon images from our gallery. As you can see, and I'll select uh, the first icon right here of the result. And I'll use a different UI ID uh, result for this. And I'll duplicate this. And I'll paste it a few times and just place all the different icons that I have right here in the results. As you can see, it's not necessarily the way I'd like results to be laid out. So I'll just use something like grid layout or something like, or maybe a table layout. I think a grid layout will be nice here with, um, well, I can set rows. To, um, well, you know what? I'll just leave the flow layout for now. Yeah, we'll see later. Um, I'll update the icons here to provide me a bit more uh, design contrast. No, that's the background. Don't mean that. Uh, and I think that's it, maybe. All right, I don't have any more images. I do. I do. So I'll just add a couple of more, more of these right here. And the last one. Yep. Now notice that the scroll bar goes all the way to the top. That's because the form is scrollable while the container is not. And I want this area to stay fixed while the rest would be scrolled. So I'll just change this to be scrollable Y instead. And scroll will happen here. Now, that's why it's useful for me to put all the images here. Because as a designer, I wouldn't necessarily see that something like this would happen. And wouldn't know how to solve it. But once I added all the components here as a mock-up, I can see some things like that happening. Now... To map the behavior, it's really simple. I just go to the search and I create a command here. And within the command, I just tell to navigate to the search results. And later on in the developer tutorial, I'll go over how to actually do that in code. But for the designer, it couldn't be simpler because when we go here and uh, obviously we need the search form, 
and we just press search, we'll get the results, right? So here are the results, and we'd like to customize the result object. So that should be pretty easy. I can just go to the border wizard, and again, we're taking stuff from uh, the design itself, and there's the image right here, and that's what I want, thumbnail, not the image, and that actually looks rather nice. So I can just cut, again, a very simple cut, that's from the bottom, and from the left, and from the right. I think I'll remove the extra pixel here, so it's just right, so there won't be too much gray. And I'll apply this to result, selected, and unselected, and pressed, and disabled, and generate. And it doesn't look like I want yet, because I need to define padding, I guess. Or, I think. Uh, yeah, probably I need to define padding, so the border will actually appear. Um, here we go. Now the padding is in the size of the border, and now we can actually see the border nicely. I can even increase the padding a bit so we can see some of the gray area, but I doubt we'd want that. Notice that the selected element doesn't have padding, so I can just paste and replace everything. Yes, and yes. And that's it. Now we have proper results, just like we want them to be. And I think that's about it for now. Back button works as expected. You, you see this is the version of the device that has a back button. And that's generally a full-blown applic search application right here from the GUI builder.